this is Jordan from Jersey, and before we get into the reviews, I've got a special announcement. You may recall that recently I've been on Legion of Dudes podcast discussing Lost. Well, I'm pleased to announce that now I'm official member of the Legion of Dudes. That's right, starting this Thursday with their Iron Man 2 podcast, you'll be able to catch me on Legion of Dudes podcast, and on Legion of Dudes Extended Edition, continuing to discuss Lost and comics. So head over to hhwlod.com, where you can subscribe to the Half Hour Wasted Legion of Dudes podcast, as well as the Extended Edition podcast, and I hope you enjoy all the content. Additionally, you're going to be able to find my videos embedded there, as well as on YouTube, and the audio from my Lost and comic book reviews and anything else I do in the future will also be on their podcast feed. So head on over to hhwlod.com, and let's get started with the reviews after we start this off right. It's the Half Hour Wasted Legion of Dudes Extended Edition Podcast. This is Jordan from Jersey, and this is what I thought of the comics I picked up on May 5th, 2010, and May 1st, 2010. Free Comic Book Day, and Cinco de Mayo. First up from Dynamite Comics, we have a special printing of Kevin Smith's Green Hornet issue number one. Kind of. Um, I actually just got a chance to look at it. I'd read the, the issue already with the regular cover, so I didn't take too close a look at this. It's actually like the first five or six pages of four different stories. So, if you haven't checked out Kevin Smith's Green Hornet number one, you should probably just pick up the whole actual issue. Um, two and three are also out at this point in time, as I record. Um, but if you want a good idea of four of the different Dynamite Green Hornet titles, definitely pick up this free comic book day one. I really like this version of the cover, and uh, I can't wait to check out the short versions of the other stories. For Marvel Comics, we have... Iron Man and Thor. In this issue, Iron Man and Thor go to the moon. Seriously. I'm not a huge Iron Man guy, I'm not a huge Thor guy, but hey, it was free. And you know what? The story had its moments, however, you know, it wasn't all that great. For one thing, this whole moon terraforming thing came out of nowhere, which I guess kind of the point of the story was it came out of nowhere for Iron Man and Thor as well, but even in a universe with superheroes... There's no way something like that is going to happen. Somebody is going to pick up on stuff being built on the moon, even if it's you know some kid in his backyard in Detroit with a telescope. It, so the logic of that was kind of weird. But, you know, if you want to check it out, like I said, all these comics that I'm showing in the beginning here are free. So even if they're not the greatest, you didn't pay anything for them. Also from Marvel Comics, we have Iron Man and Nova. What I didn't realize, although I probably should have from the way that Nova is drawn on the cover, by the way, I think his costume looks horrible in that picture, and throughout the book, is that uh, this is actually aimed at kids more than adults. So I read a few pages and went, yeah, this isn't for me. If you have a kid, though, you probably want to see if they like this issue. Free Comic Book Day, they have a lot of kids' comics, because let's face the obvious here, the majority of comic book readers are older than me, and they need some new blood in the comic book readers. So, get your kids some free comics. You know, get them in young. And then uh, give them, when they turn older, some uh, more adult comics. Not that way, but just, you know, to the maturity level. You know what I mean. From Oni Press, we have Resurrection number zero. I've been meaning to check out the comic book Resurrection. Um, it's basically aliens invaded ten years ago, and then one day they just up and left, and now everybody has to kind of rebuild the world. Um, at least that's how I understand it to be, and this seemed to follow what I understood to be. My shop doesn't actually get Resurrection in. So I'm going to have to see if I can change that. But for now, this issue number zero, very cool. Um, I didn't need to know anything else to understand it, as most issues that are numbered zero, that's the case. So um, check this one out, and check out Resurrection. I can't vouch for the whole series, but uh, at least for this issue zero, it's very cool. And the last free comic I have this week is Irredeemable number one, with the flip side of Incorruptible number one, which I did not realize when I picked it up. I thought it was just Irredeemable, and I was like, oh, that's a big issue. No, it's two books in one, which is awesome. So I've heard awesome things about Incorruptible and Irredeemable. Never picked them up, though. So this was a great introduction to the two series. Um, basically, the idea is Superman with his... or Superman-like character called the Plut Plutonian, uh, who has, you know, super hearing, can hear everything in the world said about him. And so when those things are good, he's in a good mood. But when, as comments, like internet commenters, you know, that kind of stuff, <laughs> tends to turn sour after a while, even if the product is exactly the same... He hears those negative comments, and it drives him crazy, and he starts killing everybody. Or at least the superheroes from this first issue. Um, so, pretty awesome idea. And then, Incorruptible, which is the flip side book in more ways than one, 
is about one of the world's supervillains who, after superhero goes crazy, decides to have a change of heart and looks like he's going to be a superhero. So I'm definitely going to start checking out both of these series, um, at least maybe in trade form. But very cool stuff in both these issues. I thought it was a really neat idea, and I cannot wait to check out the rest of the series. So that's it for the free Comic Book Day comics that I got. Let's head on to the comics that came out May 5th. First off, we've got The Amazing Spider-Man 630. Now, this was the first issue of the Shed Arc, which is going to focus on the Lizard. And to be quite honest, I'm not the biggest Lizard fan. In fact, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the classic Spider-Man villains. I know that's sacrilege, but uh, a lot of them are just pretty dumb. Which, granted, they're fighting a guy in a spider costume, but whatever. This issue is a fairly standard setup issue explaining why the Lizard is going to be on the rampage this time. It also had some scenes between... Uh, Spider-Man and the Black Cat, which was fun. Peter Parker went on a kind of sort of date, and also Madam Web and uh, all the Kravenoffs showed up. So there's nothing hugely stand out about the writing of the issue. I did like the way the lizard was written with the kind of uh, inner lizard brain talking alongside of his, uh, his outward human voice. That was kind of cool. What really stood out about this issue was the art. Chris Bacalo, or Bachelo, I'm sorry, sir, if I'm butchering your name, I probably am, I uh, was born to draw the lizard. You know, granted, I probably said the same thing back when I'm pretty sure he drew uh, Venom. My internet is actually down at the moment. I'd be looking this up to verify, but I'd, it's down because it's incredibly windy in New Jersey right now, and I don't feel like going through my long boxes to find the back issues, but I'm pretty sure he drew Venom. Uh, he's drawn several other arcs in Amazing Spider-Man since they went thrice monthly. I wasn't huge on his art when I first saw it. I thought it was way too cartoony. It is so grown on me. It is great. Um... Just seeing his lizard <laughs> in this double slash page, I mean, how cool is that lizard? That is a cool lizard right there. And he also draws a mean black cat and Spider-Man. So if you're totally against the cartoony style art um, of Chris Backlow, you might not love this issue or this arc. If you are like me and you think it's incredible art, um, you can put up with the kind of uh, just standard story of this issue. Hopefully it ramps up in the next few issues, um, and we'll see if they can bring some new life to the Lizard, as they've been doing with a lot of the classic villains over the past two years. Then we've got Orson Scott Card's Ender Shadow Command School, issue 4 of 5. This issue came out a ways back, and it looks like issue 5 also came out a ways back, and I missed both of them somehow. Um... So I've got to go find that. I didn't see it on the stand at my comic shop, so maybe it was delayed, but Marvel's website, I did check that part earlier before the internet went out, um, said that it came out in February. So hopefully I will be able to find that issue. Um, this was certainly a good issue. Great writing, great art, continues to be very awesome. I don't think I ever read the book Ender's Shadow, Red Ender's Game, but uh, I'm following it just well, having never read the book it's based on, and it's a really cool companion piece to Ender's Game. Now this wasn't a free comic book day comic, but it is Iron Man 2, free comic I got when I went to go see Iron Man 2, the movie. Um, if you have not, as of this moment, seen Iron Man 2, and seriously, if you're watching comic book reviews online, you probably have. Um, but if, for some reason, you are in full traction in a hospital with good internet access somewhere, I, first off, I feel terrible for you. Hope uh, get well soon. But when you go see Iron Man 2, you are going to be in for a treat. Um, I'm not the biggest Iron Man fan in terms of the actual character. I love the movies, though. On the flip side, I love Spider-Man. Not a huge fan of the Spider-Man movies. But that aside, this was a very fun movie. Stay after the credits, for sure. You are not going to want to miss that. Um, won't spoil anything, but I was like, oh boy, that's fun. And uh, yeah, fun movie. I loved. All the acting was great. Justin Hammer, played by Sam Rockwell, was a great uh, flip side to Tony Stark. Mickey Rourke was awesome. Uh, Scarlett Johansson pulled it off, and uh, yeah, all together, really fun movie. Maybe a bit long? I don't know. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't bored at any point. Way too many kids in the theater I was at, though. Don't bring your kids. Seriously. Not that it's, like, too violent for them or something, but just, I don't want to hear them. They're annoying. I do not like your children. Sorry. So that's it for the comics I read the week of May 5th, 2010. Have a good week, and as soon as my internet goes back up, I'll post this, which means by the time you're seeing this, my internet will be back up. Unless it's back down again, but hopefully not. I'm very tired. I need to go to bed. <laughs> Goodbye. It's the Half Hour Wasted Legion of Dudes Extended Edition Podcast. <laughs>